Hey everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we're working on a Ford Transit. Very nice one actually. It's been part converted. <clears throat> it's for a very young family and for their weekend trips away. And in the back here, you've got the bench seats that goes up to make a table. And you have a bunk which goes along there. So on this, we're gonna be fitting a diesel heater and a battery in here. We're going to be cladding the ceiling, fitting a small partition wall at the end there, basically making it a little bit more comfortable for them. First thing I need to do is run a 16mm cable to get this battery system in. It's going to be a very, very simple battery system. You're going to have a 110 amp hour battery, an isolator, a small uh, blade fuse box because it's only going to be running the diesel heater a USB socket and the roof lights. That's all there's going to be on it. So let's start running some cable, shall we? Right, so the first thing we need to do on this is remove these seats because we're going to be cladding that back wall for them as well. So we get these out of the way. We get all the cushions, everything out of the way, put it inside the workshop. So it gives us a lot more room to work with. So we're going to be running the cable from the battery here down through this part here out and into the wall. I'm going to take this wall off so we can get access to it by drilling off the rivets. Okay then, so I've now got to get some of this 16mm cable from here, down here I'm going to go through this and then into the wall and then out the back. I'm not going to film all of that because it's, it's about finding place to hide the cable. So I'm going to get the cable fed up through into here, the battery box under the seat. I'm going to drill a couple of holes in this uh, metal angle here or this enclosure. I'm going to feed it through some conduit and get it in there. I'm going to put a couple of grommets in here um, so the holes that I drilled do not cut into the cable because it's a live cable so we've got a couple of rubber grommets going in and once we've done that I'll go through the whole process and what I've done I'll show you where it is afterwards. Right so what we've done is <clears throat> we've run a 16mm cable from where the battery compartment is under the seat down through a piece of conduit down there we've drilled a hole through here and here and put grommets either side through a bit of conduit here and it goes down behind here as you can see down there the conduit and it runs all the way behind these boards comes out into where the battery compartment is going to be here and that's the cable I'm going to attach a board to this side which is going to house the fuse box it's going to house the isolator as well and then it'll be wired the other side straight onto the battery so that's one job jobbed. Loads more to go. Just going to recap. So this is where the battery's going to go. I've cut a board to go here. Now on this side of it here will be mounted the split charge relay. We'll have the fuse box, the isolator switch. So the wires come out of the back of it. So I've cut it to fit and I've also drawn around the framework on the back. So I now know that <clears throat> By drawing around this when this is up, I know everything that I need to mount needs to fit into this space, especially when I'm going to have cables coming through and I don't have to drill through big sort of framework pieces. It'll just come through this. This is 12mm ply. That sits in there perfect. Everything I mount on there just fine, easily accessible. The battery being there, down in there. All cables will go through this bit of wood to everything that's mounted on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this to the bench, lay it all out, 
we'll find out where we're going to put everything. Look at you can even see me unbox all this lot. Right. So there you have it, one isolator switch. That's the fuse holder that goes between the battery, the leisure battery and the VSR, voltage sensing relay or split charge relay, whichever way you want to call it. And that is your Durite voltage sensor relay. Comes all the bits you need. That's the earth wire. Durite are good, proven, so I use them for that main reason. And this little kit here is your blade fuse holder. So you one, two, three, there's only four on there. One would be the roof fan, one would be the diesel heater, one would be the lights, and one would also be a USB socket which we'll put in there for them so they can charge their phones in the back as well. You've got your in and you've got your out. Simple. So now we just need to lay this out on the board. All right, so the board we've mounted like that. So we know that the battery is that end. So if we put the isolator there, closer to that end, so if we say about there, then from the isolator, we go into the fuse box. Do you know what? We're not going to give him that one. I don't like that one. I'm going to give him one of the bigger ones. One for expansion. Yeah. Because that's a separate feed into each one of those and out. So no, I don't like that one. I will get one of the other ones. So this is a 12-way fuse box. And they're all numbered. And the good thing about these fuse boxes, when a fuse blows, one, it lights up. This will light up to let you know the fuse has blown. Plus you've got one input, and then all your outputs. Didn't like that other fuse holder at all. So we're giving this. So it's a 10-way, not a 12-way, there's only 10. But it gives room for expansion if they want to add other electrical items in there. So yeah, so out of the isolator into the fuse box, the voltage sensing relay can go just about there with the fuse above it. Just make sure I'm under the line. Yeah, loads of room. So with these voltage sensing relays, you have one of these fuses close to your main starter battery at the front and one near the leisure battery at the back. So that is the layout I'm gonna go for. Changing the layout a little bit. So the split charge relay is gonna go over that side with the wire above it. So the wire will come through the back of the board from the front of the vehicle into this, into this fuse here, out the fuse, into the split charge relay, from the split charge relay, back through here, onto the battery. That will charge up the battery. Then, 
will be coming off the battery through our isolator there and then through our from our isolator it will come out of the isolator through the back of the board and back then through the front here to the my hand was in the way then so once the battery comes on through once it comes off the battery through this isolator out through the isolator behind here and back through onto the fuse board where then it distributes to all the items that we're going to plug into it so the layout I've got all I need to do is connect all these up and um, drill the holes where they're going to go I need to cut this out where the earth wire is coming out of I'm not going to record any more of this because I will bore you to tears and you'll be listening to loads more music. So I'll get the board made up, we'll get it in the van and I'll explain how this setup works. Right okay, the board is now done. I'll show you the back of it as well. So this I need to connect. Let's explain it from the front because that black wire is the earth wire for the split charge relay or the voltage sensing relay, whichever you want, whatever you know it as. So, power from the battery comes in here, goes out here, and then comes back into here. So we can isolate any power going to that, which distributes to all the auxiliaries in the van. Right, power from the battery which the wire we've already installed in the van comes through this hole here into the midi fuse out of midi fuse back in through this back out through here to the leisure battery so that will charge the leisure battery one of these midi fuses will be attached 
to the wire near the main starter battery. Um, that's the advice they give, one each end of the, near, as close to your batteries as possible. So we can install that in, then we will get the wire coming through here from the van, we'll terminate it and connect it to that. Then we need to work on the front part by the starter battery, put the midi fuse on and attach that wire or the wire that comes out the midi fuse onto the main starter battery. Then this is complete. Right, I'm going to go and screw this in place and I'm going to attach this wire which I think I'll take you along for the ride on this one and you can see what we do. So we've got to do here now is I need to terminate the earth wire that comes off of the VSR. I've made the cable up for the earth wire for the battery. Um, I've got a point down here where I can drill into and create an earth, or should I say, not create an earth, earth is for AC. I've found a point on the body of the chassis or piece of metal on the body which will become the earth for the battery and it's in a lovely position down here once I've all once I've screwed it all in got it in place I can show you where it is and why I've chosen this point but it's a perfect little point to use so what I'm going to do is I'm using a self drilling self tapping screw so I need to scrape off because it's a painted area so I'm going to scrape off a little bit of paint so it gives us a good point Let's get this started off. Of course, a very tight space down here. Right, so that's given us the hole drilled. I now need to crimp the earth wire from the voltage sensor and relay. And in this, with this relay, they actually gave you the crimp for it as well, which makes life a lot easier. Right, 
always test your crimps so they're on nice and tight. So that one's on there. And that's the one with the battery. So that will go through there. And then that will screw through to the body of the van. Well, not to the body for the bit of chassis I found down here. Right. Let's get that in there. Right, let me bring you in the van so you can see where we're at. Right, so that's where the cable comes through, in through the board, into that fuse. Right, the earth cable. Ah, oh, get rid of the light. Right, let's zoom in. So as you can see, I found a nice little bit of bodywork there where we can attach the earth wire and the voltage sensing relay. So the battery will sit here and then be strapped down. I'll probably put a piece of three by two that in to stop it shifting sideways, but it'll be held down by a ratchet strap so it won't bounce out of place. And there's the cables from behind the board that we've just made. And that's the board that's in place. We're finally getting there with the battery install. All I've got left to do now is terminate that end and put the MIDI fuse there as well. And I need to go right now because I've got a battery flashing on the camera telling me it's gonna die. We've got our fuse holder. There's our cable. So I need this cable to go into one end of the fuse holder and another bit to come out and go onto the battery. Unfortunately, I've run out of red. So we're going to put a bit of white on there. There you go. connecting this to the live um, but I've put no fuses in this or the other end as yet so it's not going to be active on this term on this terminal of the battery there wasn't a nut so I found a nut that fitted and I'm using a lock nut so it doesn't come loose with the vibration of the van So there you go, comes off of the battery, through the fuse, out there, and which goes round there through to the back. And it comes up out of there, through that fuse into the VSR. So there's a lot of explanation on stuff I've done today. Hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, or if you've got any questions, comment below and I can answer any questions I can, or if I can. But if I don't, and I can't answer some questions about something, I know a man who can. Next job, get the battery and put it in the, the hole. I've got to cut the ratchet straps down to size. When you cut these straps, this stuff frays. 
So they say hit it with a lighter. Yeah, I use just a little bit of a big lighter. My blowtorch. It does the trick. Just a little bit quicker. Right, the amount of screws on there holding this buck when you might think it's a bit overkill. But God forbid ever the van turns over or bounce over something really, really big bump. This battery's gonna go nowhere. Right now I need to cut the other side. So You see how that's starting to fray there? There you go, that'll stop that from fraying. Right, what I'm going to go and do is cut a piece of 3 by 2 go from here to here to stop any sideways movement. So if I cut a piece, nine and a half inches. So I know the battery is 355 long. Right, so what I'm going to lay in the bottom of this, obviously because I've got these screws here, I'm going to put a bit of foam, um, some foam matting that I've got. And it's a sticky foam matting, so we stick that over the top of there, fill that in there, but let's make sure the battery fits first, shall we? <laughs> Right, you notice there's quite a gap here as well. So what I might do is put a bit of three by two either side of this. Because obviously there's, there's gonna be a little bit of movement there. Right, it's a tiny bit too tight, so I need to cut that down. Right, I'll just rip the edge of that off on the table saw. 
And now that should fit down in there just nicely. Be a lot easier if I take the battery out because the battery has got to come out anyway to put that little bit of rubber flooring in. Oh. Right. There you go, and then that will be strapped over the top there. And it's got to come out again. Let's measure. A little piece of rubber to go in the bottom there. So let's do 350. Or 185. 350 by 185. I'm going to cut a piece of that and I'll be back. Right, this is that foam flooring that I was on about. It's only very thin. It's more like a, it's an insulation style sort of foam. And it's got a sticky self-adhesive bottom. So all we're gonna do is lay this in the bottom of here. Like so. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's only to cover up the screws. And then we can put the battery back in. Like so. And that is going nowhere. That's the positive terminal and that's the negative. So, this will be attached to this just here. And the negative will be attached to this end here, like so. Now all I've got left to do is put the midi fuses in, switch the engine on, see if the VSR lights up. Right, so this is all hooked up now. What I'm actually looking for is that to light up when I switch the engine on. Right, I'm gonna fire it up. Hopefully, on this camera, you will see that whether it lights up or not. So that's good news. The lights come on on the split charge relay, which means that is working as we expected it to. So there you go. That was a simple 12 volt install for today. And I'm glad that's actually worked out well. The split charge come on as expected. So everything's fine. The earthing's good. All the connections are good. So all we need to do now is carry on with the rest of the build. Um, attached to that will be some lights, which are already up there. We're going to take them down, rewire them, put them on the cladding. There will be a USB socket, which will be up the end there by the 240 volt socket, so they can plug the phones in. Um, they've, we've got a turbo fan going in the roof, so the fan will be hooked up to it. And finally, the, the diesel heater, which will be also in here. So them 12 volt lights were powered only when this van was hooked up. And apparently so, it's got a 12 volt power supply direct from the consumer unit.
Right, so I'm assuming this is their 12 volt power supply. Okay. And that is wired in from 240. Right, so what I've got to do basically is unwire all this and then remove it because that will no longer be used. So this wire that goes through the conduit goes through there and up through here, which goes up, and I'm assuming it powers the lights. But we will test that. And let's get this. Hmm. Right, I'm going to just have to cut that. Yep, so this is a power supply that will output 24 volts or 12 volts. I might actually reuse this cable and extend it to the lights over there because it's already in conduit. They've used plenty enough sort of gauge cable because it's only got like three core cable you use in the house. But plenty for those lights. All right, I need to put this back together. So that literally is it for today on this van. A bit messy in there at the moment where we've been working, but now we finish the electric side of it for now. We'll give this a tidy up, clean it all out. So I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week's video and the transit, the first part of the transit build. The electrics was quite a simple install. I hope you sort of grasped most of what I was trying to say within the video and what I was getting at. I know I was, might have sounded a bit confusing at times and I do apologise. But if you do have any questions on it, leave it in the comments below. Um, it was a pretty simple electrical installation really because it's only going to be like a weekend or a small holiday van for the family. They will be having solar fitted at some point and I'm more than likely going to be the one to do that. We do have some other bits on this uh, transit to do so please watch out for the up and coming videos. We've got a roof vent, we've got to clad the van and also we've got a heater installation and we're building a partition behind the rear seats where the children sit. I'm not going to waffle anymore. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. It really makes a difference. Let's me know you're enjoying my videos and it also improves my channel, gives me um, a reason to improve it. Knowing full people, well, people like it. And if you don't like my videos for any reason, please leave in the comment below why. Um, you know, I do accept all feedback and anything I can do to improve my channel content, um, the production of the videos, anything, I'll do my best. But please, you know, 
your input is what drives me to do this. That's it for now. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying well. And most of all, staying really, really happy. Bye for now.